Time for the market report. Wheat still going up while other row crops coming down. That's right, Mike. And the reasons might not be what you think, and we'll get into that. But first, the numbers trending down overall with some big splashes here and there. We'll get into the details. And then our row report. What's making the markets move? And finally, livestock. How do the herds look? And what's Prop 12's effect? So, markets trending down last week, but seeing so much red can be deceiving. Let's take a look. Last week's biggest loss, soybean oil, down about four and three quarters cents, about an eight percent drop from the previous week. Last week's biggest gain, wheat, this time up 58 and a half cents, an eight and a half percent rise from the previous week. We'll get into the reasons for it, and they have to do with corn, strangely enough. So what do we mean by that? Well, according to market analyst Arlen Suderman, the prices of all grains are being affected just as much by market traders speculating the crop condition as simple, supply, as simple supply and demand. For that, we have to focus on corn, the grain most talked about right now due to weather conditions in corn country. Keep in mind that there's a lot of traders trading this market who don't know what a corn plant looks like, uh, but they do read charts, they do read momentum, and they are watching the forecasts and there is a skepticism, but they can't afford to be wrong if the rains do come. If we get to Monday and we see another big drop in the ratings and the weekend rains again disappointed, I anticipate we'll probably take it back the other way again. As I'm a former agronomist, I've walked a lot of cornfields and the research that I find has basically uh, identified there's three phases where you can really impact yield. And it's really in, in that uh, V5, V6 and up level where you set the maximum ear size. Um, and it, it can get smaller after that, but it can't get bigger after that. And then, of course, pollination is the time we're most sensitive. And most of the crop's pollination this year is going to be in the last third of July, so a little bit later. And, and then it's that grain fill stage we get into August. So now we're in that first phase. Uh, and a lot of people are arguing, oh, no, it's earlier than that. And I say, okay, give me a research study. Give me a link. I'll happy to read it. And nobody has yet. Uh, but the, these new hybrids really impress me. And it's not just the genetics, it's the ability to seed to soil contact. It gives us good uh, root development early, the insecticides, um, just everything we do with technology these days. When I bet against these crops, I'm usually wrong. Now, am I saying there's no damage? No, absolutely not. I think we have enough problem spots that are starting to be affected where the ceiling is being brought down, the ceiling yield is being brought down, that we are starting to be a drag to it. Now, if you look at condition index scores, where we're at now compared to other years that were similar in mid-June, we've had uh, one year that had above trend yields, that was 1992. We've had two years that had near trend yields, and for corn we had two years that were below trend. And so, Anything is still possible, but the, uh, we're starting to drag that ceiling down. Moving on to cattle and hogs, we first take a look at the current cattle on feed report by the USDA. Cattle and calves on feed down 3% from this time last year. Placements in feedlots up 5%. Marketing of fed cattle up 2%. And other disappearance down 3%. Once again, Arlen Suderman helps us understand what this means. Placements were a little bigger than we expected. Yeah. We expected them to be up a couple percent from a year ago because a year ago was an abnormally low year, but still about five and a half percent below the five-year average. They ended up only about 50,000 head below the five-year average, so it came in a little bit stronger. We weren't expecting that. Overall marketings were pretty close to expectations. I would call it modestly weak. We're still tightening supplies. There's no question about that. And the, and the main thing I think on cattle is now Father's Day weekend was kind of the last steak weekend. Fourth of July weekend's kind of a hamburger weekend. Then we get in the dog days of summer. So I think the product demand's gonna soften. We started seeing that in the cold storage report that came out at the end of the week, how we're starting to move down the value chain from beef to pork to poultry. I, we're holding up better than really, I think, anticipated. Um, the, we thought the packers would slow things down, get a little bit better control, but through all this, their margins, their packer margins have held up better than expected. And so we expect this week's slaughter data to come in a little bit higher than what was first anticipated. They're pulling in a few more animals, and that's helping support the cash market a little better than anticipated. 
Prop 12 is the real problem, trying to sort it all out. I mean, we got the good news that uh, California is going to allow a transition period as we read it, and then the courts kind of codified it. Um, but as we read it, if, as long as you have the pork, the non-compliant pork in hand in the state of California by July 1st, you have until the end of the year to utilize it. So that's got a lot of retailers trying to buy up now. And so that's a drain on pork supplies now, which we saw in the cold storage report. Uh, but then it'll slow down. But we're still trying to figure out, okay, how many, what portion of the hogs compliant, what aren't. There's still a fear of building up pork supplies after July 1 in the other 49 states, so to speak. And South Slaughter is high. South Slaughter is as high as it was pandemic levels in 2020. We anticipate that's gonna be the case. We're shrinking the breeding herd, just like what we're doing in the cattle herd. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. A lot to get through, never a dull moment.